Welcome to a brief video about how to reduce communication apprehension. Now, in general, there are three ways of reducing it in the long term. Realize we are not going to be talking about techniques to lower your stage fright, which is fear that you immediately feel, but how to reduce communication apprehension long term. Now, one of the first place ways to do this is what's called systematic desensitization which is a big long words for getting used to it. Uh, it. It starts with people learning to relax and then they are actually introduced to the thing that they fear slowly and incrementally. There's actually a place that does this for people who have arachnophobia and, and people who have true arachnophobia do not just see a spider and be like, oh, spider, kill it. No, people with arachnophobia see a spider and faint in fear or run away screaming. These people actually can go to an institute where they use systematic desensitization to help them. They, they slowly introduce them to spiders. They might begin with just a picture of a spider. And then once they're able to handle that, they move on to a video of a spider. Uh, maybe it's an old crocodile hunter video and you hear them going, crikey, that's a hairy one. And then as they move on up, it might be a dead spider in a terrarium, a dead spider on the table next to them, a live spider in a terrarium, obviously locked up. And they actually can get people who would faint from fear to allowing spiders to walk on their hands, which I won't even do. And I'm really not scared of spiders. The same thing can be done with communication. Uh, by introducing people to small increments of it. It is part of the reason why your speeches in this class often begin with small, easier to do speeches and then get more and more complicated as they go. The second system that can be done is called cognitive restructuring. A lot of communication apprehension actually doesn't make much sense. Let's face it, I have never given a speech and been physically harmed for it, ever, okay? You are more likely to get injured doing vacuuming at home than you are giving a speech. Not only that, most people are nice and like to communicate with other people. And so a lot of times in communication apprehension, you need to identify what, what's actually going through your head with these fearful thoughts. And they usually don't make a lot of sense. So you need to find the error in that logic and restate the thought in a new way about the fact that every, people like to communicate with me. It's all going to be okay. I'm going to be physically fine. Now, while you can do this immediately, it takes a lot of doing of it. You have to constantly be doing this cognitive restructuring. And if you're alone, even say the th new thoughts out loud about how they don't make any sense about these things. That really helps illustrate how it can be helpful. This can be used on any fear that is unreasonable that someone has about finding the error in the logic and restating it. One of the final other ways is skills training. The fact is, we are less scared when we know we're good at something. I myself have never had a high communication apprehension when it came to public speaking, uh, but it has gone down. Why? Because I got better at it. When I first took a public speaking course, I actually scored a 12 on the PRCA for public speaking. When I take it now, I get seven. And all of that comes from skills training. Uh, that's a five point reduction right there. The same thing happens with anything. When I first started mountain biking, I was really scared to take steep hills. In fact, me and my friend stood there on our bikes for about five minutes trying to tell each other that they should have the honor of going first down this 45 degree incline. Years later, I take hills like that with no problem and look forward to them. Once again, why? Because my skill set got better. 
These are the three main ways that you can go about reducing your communication apprehension in the long term. And they work. I know they work. I've seen them work. I've had a student faint during their first speech and end up by the end of the semester giving the best speech in the class. I had another student who was so scared she sounded she just quaked she sounded like she was talking through a fan that's how much she was shaking and she'd literally be up there going and i can't and it was all just from her anxiety of communicating by the end of the semester she got down to a hand twitch by having systematic desensitization and skills training by the end of the next semester, she had gotten rid of the hand twitch and she actually joined the speech and debate team at Cal State Long Beach the next year. All right. That's how much she had conquered her fear. Now, are you ever going to get from a 30 in the PRCA down to a 7? No. But you can easily lower it to a very manageable 18, just like my student did over a year of skills training, cognitive restructuring, and systematic desensitization.